Hello everyone and welcome back to Classic Comics. Today I'm talking about Jupiter's Legacy by Mark Miller and Frank Quitely. Now this was published in 2013, but it's going to be a Netflix series which premieres this week, so I thought I'd talk a little about it. I won't get into the specifics of the plot in order to avoid any spoilers. I'm going to talk about how the series was created and Miller's motivation behind writing it, which I found to be very interesting. According to Miller, the story is influenced by Star Wars, King Kong, ancient mythology, and the Golden Age of Comics. It was written as Miller's treatise on the connection between superheroes and America's ideals. The story explores the generational conflict between a group of aging superheroes known as the Union, who used the powers they gained in 1932 for the betterment of mankind, in particular their leader, the Utopian, and their children. Using superheroes as an allegory for American economic and military might isn't really new, but this is one of the better stories along those lines. It also isn't the first story that focuses on superheroes fighting among themselves over ideological reasons. In the last 25 years or so, it's become increasingly common for superheroes to battle each other rather than fighting supervillains. These stories often involve some of the heroes wanting to seize power over the objections of the other heroes. Due to his immense power and his status as the first modern superhero, and one of the most popular and recognizable characters, and his image as a morally upright and incorruptible hero, Superman, or some sort of stand-in for him, is often the focus of these sorts of stories about the morality and ethics of having great power, and when it should be used. The Utopian is an obvious substitute for Superman, and it's the conflict between his view of morality and how superheroes should behave and that of the next generation of heroes that the plot hinges on. Like Superman, the Utopian is an almost saintly, too-good-to-be-true hero, and like Superman, some people seem to resent his unshakable morals and his absolute views of right and wrong. Other conflicts and themes in the book include socio-political and economic differences among the older heroes about capitalism and economics, in the form of the Utopian's differences with his brother, Brainwave. He was also influenced by Roman mythology, as in the name Jupiter, which is the Roman name for Zeus, which Miller chose because it evoked a grand mythological scope to the story by blending those themes with modern superheroes instead of the Greco-Roman gods. Miller has also described the story as evoking the generational conflict of Hamlet and explores as one of its themes the question of what would it be like to grow up as Wonder Woman or Superman's kids. Miller said the following about Jupiter's legacy in an interview. As someone who grew up with an American flag in my bedroom, I watched from across the Atlantic in the past few years to see something I'd never thought I'd see in my lifetime, widespread poverty in the United States. It's a country that growing up I always associated with things getting bigger and better, so to see it contracting in this way is actually quite terrifying. That served as the inspiration for the backdrop to this story. The superheroes are impotent in the face of this complex situation, and that's where the story kicks off. That idea of democracy and everyone having an equal say is such a fundamentally decent one and something we should cherish. And for me, the United States has always been tied up with superheroes as well. It seems a fitting analogy to tie the end of the American empire in with this big grand Twilight of the Superheroes kind of story. If you've seen the trailer, there's a sequence that involves a group of people traveling to a remote island, and Miller has said that this sequence was inspired by King Kong. I think that he set the beginning of the story back during the Great Depression to better connect the story to the themes about the failures of the economy. And since King Kong was first released during that time, perhaps that's what led him to look to King Kong for inspiration. The mystery of what happened to the protagonists of Jupiter's legacy on the island in 1932 will be gradually revealed during the course of the miniseries. I won't comment on how they got their powers other than to say it really just prompts more questions than answers. Now, deconstruction of superheroes can be done well or can be done poorly. 
More often than not, it's done poorly, but this is one of the better efforts at a story like this. I've had mixed reactions to Miller's work over the years. It's been negative more often than not. I wasn't a big fan of Kick-Ass or Kingsman, for example. I don't think he's generally as good as Grant Morrison when it comes to mind-blowing ideas or sheer inventiveness, or as clever as Alan Moore when it comes to character. But he's better than, say, Garth Ennis, who I think relies too much on adolescent storytelling that involves over-the-top gore for the sake of shock value to keep the reader interested. Much in the same way that Watchmen was about Alan Moore's criticism of America's Cold War policy of peace through military superiority, Jupiter's legacy is about America's socio-economic model, the failures of that model, and how best to deal with it. It's a smart deconstruction of the superhero genre that tackles big, relevant issues in a way that doesn't resort to easy, simple answers or pander to its audience. I don't actually have Netflix, so I won't be watching this show. But if you do, I recommend giving Jupiter's Legacy a look. If it doesn't stray far from the source material in any significant way, I think you're going to enjoy it. Let me know what you think of Jupiter's Legacy in the comments, and please hit the like button before you leave. Also, please sub to the channel and hit the bell for notifications, and I'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching.